What HDMI is, High Definition Multimedia Interface. That's what HDMI stands for, though nobody actually calls it that. HDMI is simply a digital cable that carries both video and audio signals in one connection. Before HDMI showed up in 2002, connecting devices was an absolute nightmare. You had VGA cables for video, separate audio cables, component cables with their red-green-blue mess, and DVI connectors that only handled video. HDMI replaced all of that chaos with one cable that does everything. Picture, sound, and even device control. Now here's where everyone gets confused. HDMI versions like 1.4, 2.0, or 2.1 refer to the ports on your devices, not the cables themselves. Your television has an HDMI version. Your PlayStation has an HDMI version. Your soundbar has an HDMI version. But the cable? The cable is just a pipe for data. It either has enough bandwidth to carry the signal, or it doesn't. When you see a cable labeled HDMI 2.1 cable in a store, that's mostly marketing. What actually matters is whether the cable can handle the bandwidth required by whatever HDMI version your devices use. A cheap cable with enough bandwidth will work exactly the same as an expensive one, assuming both are built properly. The cable doesn't care about versions. It cares about how much data per second it can push through. This is the single biggest misconception about HDMI, and it's why people waste money on overpriced cables that do nothing extra. HDMI 1.0 through 1.4, the foundation years. HDMI 1.0 launched in 2002 with one goal, make digital video simple. It could handle 1080p video at 60 frames per second, which was perfect for the HD televisions that were just starting to appear in stores. Early DVD players and set-top boxes adopted it quickly because it eliminated cable clutter. HDMI 1.1 and 1.2 added DVD audio support, but nothing groundbreaking happened until version 1.3 arrived. HDMI 1.3 increased bandwidth to 10.2 gigabits per second and introduced deep color, which allowed for more color information in each frame. This made gradients smoother and reduced banding in dark scenes. Most people didn't notice the difference, but video files absolutely did. Then came HDMI 1.4 in 2009, and this is where things got interesting, and also where the first major confusion started. HDMI 1.4 technically supported 4K resolution, which sounds impressive until you read the fine print. It only supported 4K at 30 frames per second, which is barely usable for anything except displaying static menus or watching very slow-moving content. For actual 4K movies or gaming, 30 frames per second creates a choppy, unpleasant experience, but manufacturers slapped 4K support on every box anyway, and consumers bought televisions thinking they were future-proofed. They weren't. HDMI 1.4 also introduced Audio Return Channel, or ARC, which let your television send audio back through the HDMI cable to a soundbar or receiver. Before this, you needed a separate audio cable running from your television back to your sound system. The idea was solid, but the execution was limited. ARC could only handle basic audio formats, not the high-quality Dolby Atmos or DTS formats that were coming. HDMI 1.4 also included Ethernet over HDMI, which theoretically let devices share an internet connection through the cable. Almost nobody ever used this feature. HDMI 2.0 and 2.1. When everything changed, HDMI 2.0 arrived in 2013 and finally delivered what version 1.4 promised. It pushed bandwidth up to 18 gigabits per second, which meant 4K video at a full 60 frames per second. This was the real 4K standard. Suddenly, 4K televisions, gaming consoles, and graphics cards could actually deliver smooth, high-resolution content. HDMI 2.0 also brought proper HDR support, which expanded the range of colors and brightness levels your screen could display. Dark scenes got deeper blacks, bright scenes got more intense highlights, and everything looked more realistic. This version became the baseline for years because it worked well and didn't require new cables for most people. If you had a decent high-speed HDMI cable from the past few years, it could handle HDMI 2.0 signals without issues. Then HDMI 2.1 showed up in 2017 and cranked everything to maximum. Bandwidth jumped to 48 gigabits per second, more than double what HDMI 2.0 offered. This opened the door for 4K at 120 frames per second and even 8K at 60 frames per second. For gamers, this was revolutionary. The PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and modern graphics cards could finally push higher frame rates at 4K resolution, making gameplay smoother and more responsive. But HDMI 2.1 also introduced features that mattered even more than resolution bumps. 
Eclipse, Variable Refresh Rate, or VRR, syncs your display's refresh rate with your console or computer's frame rate, eliminating screen tearing and stuttering. Auto Low Latency Mode, or ALLM, automatically switches your television into game mode when you start playing, reducing input lag without you touching any settings. Enhanced Audio Return Channel, or EARC, replaced the old ARC and could finally handle advanced audio formats like Dolby Atmos and DTS Master Audio. Here's the problem. HDMI 2.1 is not a guaranteed package. The HDMI forum allows manufacturers to pick and choose which features they include. Why HDMI 2.1 creates so much confusion. A television can claim HDMI 2.1 support, but only include one or two features from the full specification. One television might have EARC, but no VRR. Another might have 4K at 120 frames per second, but no ALLM. A third might claim HDMI 2.1, but cap the actual bandwidth at 24 gigabits per second instead of the full 48, which means some higher-end features simply won't work. Manufacturers are not required to disclose which specific features their HDMI 2.1 ports actually support, so you have to dig through spec sheets or reviews to figure out what you're actually getting. This creates a massive headache for gamers especially. You buy a television advertised with HDMI 2.1, plug in your PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X, and discover that 4K at 120 frames per second doesn't work because the port doesn't have enough bandwidth, or VRR is missing entirely, so you still get screen tearing in fast-moving games. Some televisions only include full HDMI 2.1 features on one or two ports, while the other ports are limited to HDMI 2.0 speeds. If you plug your console into the wrong port, you're stuck with lower performance and you might not even realize why. The cable situation makes this worse. HDMI 2.1 requires an ultra-high-speed cable to reach the full 48 gigabits per second. Older high-speed cables or premium high-speed cables can't carry that much data. If you use an older cable with an HDMI 2.1 device, you might get some features but not all of them. Your picture might cut out randomly, or certain resolutions and frame rates won't appear in your settings menu. The cable simply can't handle the data load. But here's the twist. Even if you buy an ultra-high-speed cable, length matters. Anything longer than 3 meters starts to struggle with HDMI 2.1 bandwidth because the signal weakens over distance. Copper cables have physical limits. ARC versus EARC and Cable Quality Reality Audio Return Channel was a good idea with bad execution. ARC lets your television send audio back to a soundbar or receiver through the same HDMI cable that brings video in. Before ARC, you needed a separate optical audio cable or RCA cables running from your television to your sound system. ARC simplified this, but it had serious limitations. It could only handle compressed audio formats like Dolby Digital and DTS, which are fine for basic surround sound but nowhere near the quality of modern formats. If you wanted lossless audio or Dolby Atmos, ARC couldn't do it. The bandwidth just wasn't there. Enhanced Audio Return Channel fixed this problem. EARC bumps the audio bandwidth up dramatically, allowing full Dolby Atmos, DTS Master Audio, and uncompressed multi-channel audio to pass through. For anyone with a high-end sound system, this is essential. But EARC only works if both your television and your soundbar or receiver support it, and you need a cable with enough bandwidth to carry it. An older HDMI cable might physically connect, but the audio will drop or revert back to compressed formats. Now let's talk about cables themselves, because there's a lot of nonsense floating around. HDMI cables come in four real categories. Standard HDMI cables handle up to 1080p video. High-speed HDMI cables handle 4K, but not at the highest frame rates or HDR. Premium high-speed cables support 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR and have 18 gigabits per second of bandwidth. Ultra-high-speed cables support HDMI 2.1 features with 48 gigabits per second. That's it. Everything else is marketing. Gold-plated connectors don't improve picture quality. They resist corrosion slightly better if you're constantly plugging and unplugging cables, but that's the only benefit. Expensive cables don't make your image sharper or your colors more vibrant. HDMI is digital. The signal either gets through intact or it doesn't. A $15 cable that meets the bandwidth requirements works identically to a $150 cable. Common mistakes and what HDMI cannot fix. The most common mistake people make make is buying the wrong cable for their setup. You purchase a new 4K television and a PlayStation 5, but you use an old HDMI cable that was sitting in a drawer for 5 years. That cable might be a standard or high-speed cable that maxes out at 10 gigabits per second. Your console and television can handle 4K at 120 frames per second, but the cable can't, so you're stuck at 4K 60 or even 1080p without understanding why. Always match your cable to the bandwidth your devices actually need. Another mistake is plugging devices 
devices into the wrong port. Many televisions have multiple HDMI ports, but not all of them support the same features. HDMI port 1 might support full HDMI 2.1 with VRR and 120 frames per second, while ports 2, 3, and 4 are limited to HDMI 2.0. If you plug your gaming console into port 3, you lose all the high-end features. Check your television's manual to see which ports support which features, because manufacturers almost never label this clearly on the television itself. People also assume expensive cables solve problems that aren't cable-related. If your picture looks washed out, or your colors seem off, a new HDMI cable won't fix that. That's a television settings issue, or a problem with the panel itself. If your television only supports a 60 Hz refresh rate, an HDMI 2.1 cable won't magically give you 120 frames per second. The cable can't upgrade your hardware. It only carries the signal your devices are capable of producing. HDMI also can't fix a low-quality panel. If you bought a budget television with poor contrast or washed-out colors, switching to a premium cable does absolutely nothing. The panel is the limitation, not the connection. Similarly, if your television has high input lag, HDMI won't reduce it unless you're using ALLM, and your television actually supports it. What comes after HDMI? DisplayPort exists and is common on computer monitors, offering similar features and sometimes higher bandwidth. Wireless video transmission is improving, but it still introduces latency and compression that wired connections avoid. HDMI isn't going anywhere. It's too embedded in consumer electronics, and it works reliably when you understand what you're actually buying. If you want to keep untangling tech confusion, go check out why USB ports come in different colors and what each one actually does.